In this lesson, because prompts are so important to mid-journey, I want to spend more time going over the community showcase to learn what inputs create great looking outputs and how we can use this to create our artwork that we are looking to create. So if we go to midjourney.com and navigate to the community showcase, or really it's called the community feed, we can see what's new or what's popular right now, technically, what's new and the all time top rated photos. So let's just take a, let's take a look at this one. This is a very realistic, very simple photo that has been the most saved and most like liked photo on Midjourney. And here is our prompt: beautiful kingfisher catching a fish. Cinematic lighting. It's not even really necessarily doing exactly what the prompt was, which is what I mentioned. Midjourney has its own randomness and its own thought process to a certain degree of creating art that's different than the human brain. So it's rarely going to output exactly what you're wanting. Not to say that that output's not going to be bad. It's probably going to look great, but it's going to be different than you initially thought, I guarantee. So having an open mind that you're coming to it with an idea and you're brainstorming and it's going to show you something that you weren't even imagining or thinking of specifically, that's gonna make your interaction with Midjourney a lot better. This is another one that's pretty cool. So bedroom melting into the ocean. You could visualize that in so many different ways. What Midjourney is doing is it's taking the huge amount of photos it has of bedrooms, of beds, of walls, of paintings, of rooms, and it's taking the huge amount of photos it has of the ocean. And it's combining those two together in an intelligent way as much as it can. And that's how it comes up with its photos. So if we go to, let's say, this other example, we have the prompt. A kneeling cat knight, portrait style, finely detailed armor, intricate design, silver, silk, cinematic lighting, and 4K resolution. So this is exactly what we're talking about. We have the subject is the cat, the composition is a portrait, the other details are he's wearing finely, he or she is wearing finely detailed armor with intricate design, and the lighting style is cinematic. Now this person could have added a mood, they could have added an environment, and they could have added a photographer or artist to emulate that would have changed the style of the output. We can also see with any of these images the exact prompt that the creator used. So if we go to these three dots, we go to copy and we click prompt and we paste that, 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 gives, us, that gives us this prompt here. But the important part, which I wanna show you now and we're gonna learn more about in later lessons, are copying the full command, which I just did like this, because that's gonna give us also not just the prompt, but the parameters that you add to the end of the prompt. So we'll just take a peek at this real quick. We have our basic parameters where we can change the aspect ratio, the quality, and the C. This is the random number that's generated that allows for Midjourney to create a uniqueness with every single photo. And we can copy those seeds once we find a specific look and feel that we like and paste it onto future art. And just as a little tip, one of my favorite parameters to use is the test P parameter. I pretty much always add that to the end of my prompts because this tells Midjourney that I want it to look photorealistic rather than abstract, which is what Midjourney will generally default to when creating images. Now, another thing I wanted to mention about uh, looking at other people's art is you can see the parent image, AKA what was the original that it came from. So we can see this is the first output that Midjourney gave. Then the artist chose this top left style, which we'll talk about how to do that. And that's what gave them this final output. So that's kind of an interesting thing to look at because you can see the process it took to get to their image. So a few other things I'll mention about the feed. You can also personalize your feed by 
favoriting and following other creators. Then it'll give you a much more specific style of art that's related to you. You can go to the bookmark section to see what art you've bookmarked. And that kind of wraps it up for learning from other people's art on here. What I would recommend doing is spending 20 minutes just going on here, looking for styles, aesthetics, and outputs that you like, clicking on them, and, and looking at the prompt. This is gonna give you more inspiration and more stuff to work with as we progress through the course. So that wraps it up for this community showcase section. One last thing I did wanna add is that a cool factor about Midjourney is that you can use emojis to create art. So this output came from <laughs> this very simple level of input of an astronaut and the dancing red dress emoji and just digital photography. That's what created this. So again, Midjourney is not gonna create exactly what you put into it. It's gonna use its massive amount of uh, images that it has to create something in the direction of what you're putting in the input.